everyone. Today I'm going to walk you through using Google Docs. I'm sure you've used Google Docs many times before, but I wanted to just point out a couple of tips and tricks in case you weren't aware of them. I also want to give you some ideas that you could use Google Docs for in the classroom that your students would be able to use to demonstrate um, their learning. So the first thing I want to make sure that you're aware of is that there are templates that are built into Google Docs. So when you go to the new plus sign within your drive, um, this arrow, if you hover over it, will actually bring up two options. You have an option for just a blank document. You also have an option from a template. So I'm going to click on from a template and kind of show you what's already inside of Google Docs. So within the template gallery, you have Robinson ISD, and then you have a general tab. So within this general tab, you have different templates for essays, reports, um, you have business letters, um, informal letters, um, you have things, uh, project proposals, um, brochures, newsletters. So take a look at that sometime just to see if there's anything that's already been created for you that would help with, um, that your, your students could use um, within your classroom. I will talk about this Robinson ISD tab here in a few minutes. Okay, from here, I'm just gonna open up a blank document and I wanna point out a couple of things within a document just to make, you, make sure you're aware of these uh, tools. When you go to the tools um, pull down, you will see that there is an option for voice typing. So this could be a great scaffold for some of our you know, younger students or just struggling students that they may need the support of having um, their, of speaking and having it typed for them. So when I click on that microphone, when I begin to speak, uh, the computer will begin to type what I'm speaking. It is not a perfect uh, match, but it could definitely benefit some of our students that might need that support. Also wanted to point out that you can change languages here. So of course right now I'm in the you know English language, but there are uh, different languages that in case you were needing that with maybe some of your EL students. Kind of along the same lines of that, um, under tools, there's also the translate document. So this could be a great way of communicating with maybe your families of your EL students um, where you might need to translate things into di different languages. Um, and so that's a, a great uh, benefit here. So under it's the translate document. Okay, so some of the things that I think, one of the things that would be a great activity or something that your students could do really across all con content areas is to keep up with an ongoing journal. And this would be a journal that you could continue throughout the school year. Um, and so there's definitely a way to set this up that maybe help keep things a little bit more organized for you. And so I'm gonna show you that now. Um, this, again, like I said, could go across content areas anytime we want to have students reflect on their learning. Um, and so this would be a great way for that. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and where the style option is, I'm going to switch this to make it say title. And I'm going to give this a very just simple title today. All right. So from here, I also would like to insert a table of contents. This will help keep things more organized as well. So under the insert tab, I'm going to go down to table contents and you have two options here. You can do one with page numbers and then you can also choose one with links. And so I'm going to choose the one with links today. And for this particular um, table of contents, I'm going to, the first entry will just be something very simple again. And then we'll continue to build that as we go. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to want to create headings. And so if you can imagine that this, you know, if this is an ongoing journal, this is going to get quite lengthy. And so in order for students to really be able to know how to get or where to, you know, pick up from where they left off and where their next journal entry will go, um, creating some headings is going to be very helpful. So again, where the styles um, tab is, I'm going to select um, one of these headings. These headings are all pretty much, they do the same thing. It's just they're, you know, different sizes. So I'm going to just choose that heading number one. And I'm going to title that the same thing that I did in my table contents. Okay. 
All right. If you'll notice, I clicked over to make this open up. So I'm going to show this outline um, so that you can actually see what's happening as I'm creating these headings. So let me do this again. I'm going to take normal text. I'm going to change it to a heading. And I'm going to continue adding my headings. This would be number two. I'm going to do it again. I could copy and paste, but let me just walk you through. So there is heading again, journal entry, journal entry, number three. If you'll notice as I was typing or adding those headings, it was populating over here on this left side. Um, and so these are actually going to be active links to where it will take you to that specific part of this document. So let me go back to this table of contents. Um, when I click here, you'll notice there's a very faint little box here. When I There's a uh, refresh button. And so when I click on that refresh button, it will actually, again, populate the same um, entries that I'm putting. These headings will now appear here. Um, so the benefit of this is if, you know, you can imagine journal entry number 75 could end up being, you know, on page, you know, 150. And so this would be an easier way for students to quickly go to that particular page and be able to type in their um, journal entry. This, the table of contents, these are actually now links. And so um, if, you know, you're, you're not wanting students to necessarily submit the entire assignment, so what they could do for you to do maybe a quick check or just, you know, sort of check in with how their entries are going, you may say, you know, find your best journal entry and, and submit in the comment section or, you know, give me that link for the, for you to look at. So this right here would be a way for them to, you know, copy that link and maybe within Schoology or Google Classroom be able to submit the link. Um, now, when they do that, you are going to get the the whole journal entry, but um, that way it doesn't completely submit the entire assignment. Um, so that's the way that would work there. Okay, so what I want to show you, we were just talking earlier about the templates. And so I'm going to show you when we go back to new and under Google Documents, I'm going to go back to that from a template again. And this time I want to talk to you about um, what this Robinson ISD tab is for. So I'm going to go to the Robinson ISD tab and here I'm going to submit template. So I'm going to take that template that we just created. I'm going to go find it. So I'm going to select document. So luckily I put that in my starred folder so I'd be able to find it. Um, so here's the journal. I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to say, yes, I want to submit a copy for this file instead of the original. Um, and then I can just maybe change the title of this template. You can also choose a category. So depending on what these different categories are, you could choose where you would like that template to live. I'm going to just stick with basics and then I'm going to submit. Once I do that, now that journal is going to live here in the Robinson ISD tab under the template gallery. And so this could be great, uh, a benefit for your team or just, you know, as you're creating things so that you're not having to recreate all the time. Um, whoever is the owner or the creator of this document does have the options to actually remove it or edit it from the gallery. But that is there and available now um, for all to use. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of show you another idea or another um, important thing to know about Google Docs. So I'm going to open, open up this particular assignment that students were asked to um, add in the text and graphic features. So they were provided with, um, you know, an article and then they were going to go back and add in uh, the graphic text and graphic features here. Um, so what I really wanted to point out with this is this um, down at the bottom, this little plus sign is your explore. So when students click on that, what's going to happen is um, Google Docs is going to give you all the things that's going to kind of populate things that are about or what it thinks this uh, particular document is about. So, um, you know, this was an article on bicycles and sure enough, that's kind of what you're seeing here are things about bicycles. And so students would then be able to do some research uh, based on what they're working on within Google Docs. 
So if, for instance, here they were wanting to, they could also search here for um, the ordinary bike, and we could look for the image. And again, there's, and so they could add that image into um, this document. So with this, what I just wanted you to make, to really make you aware of is this feature down in the right corner, this Explore feature. And it is very helpful because it really does pull in, you know, what this particular document um, is, is, is about. Okay. Um, the next thing, kind of to piggyback on this journal and how that was set up, um, a lot of times we're looking for um, just sort of extension activities and higher level things that our students can do, um, some of our higher level students. And so um, using these links and the way that, and headers and the way that was set up, this is a great activity, um, a writing activity for some of our higher level students. And so what this does is this allows, when you set something like this up, it allows students to be able to um, go through their writing process and really plan out um, different um, scenarios or different things that can happen within their story. And so, you know, two things from that, your, your writers are having to really think about different ways their story can be written and readers are really getting to look at it from a different you know, way of um, ending, like what the story could, the way the story could end. So let me kind of walk you through what this would look like. This is just a really quick example of um, setting this page up. So here, this would be, um, you would want to make sure to use page breaks for every page. And these are set up to be headings. So I would just title those headings by page one so that they show here, okay? So page one, there is text, and here's the story. Um, the students have included, you know, a path. They can, you know, so at the end of this page, um, the, there's an option that the writers are going to give the readers. Um, either the character is going to take the right path or the character is going to take the left path. So let me show you how that would be set up. So these are set up as links and whatever the, the reader decides at that point, they're going to be able to take that, that link and go to the next, you know, whatever that says for that page. So the way you would do that is you would go to insert and you would go to link and it's actually gonna give you the option here for headings. So if I choose that heading, I can choose what page I want. So if on this one, it's gonna take them to page three. So I'm gonna apply that. And then within here, I can actually change this to what I would like for that to say. Let me do this again. So I'm gonna highlight, I'm gonna insert this as a link, I'm going to change this to page three. And so now what's going to happen is this reader is going to decide if the character is going to take the left path, that'll take them to page two, or page three if they take the, the I'm sorry, the left path will take them to page three. So just a, a fun way to, you know, really extend the activity of just writing and writing, you know, um, a, a fictional story and then, but including Google Docs to really kind of extend um, their thinking there. All right, another example is um, kind of using the highlight tool and you could really use this in, in different ways. Um, this would be, you know, a lot of times we're trying to get students to really pull out the most important information or we're wanting students to really summarize information. And a lot of times that can be a struggle for kids when there is a lot of words on a page to really be able to find that and be able to really summarize. So one way to think about that is if you take some of those articles, this could even be maybe, you know, in math but with a word problem um, for students that really need to sort of um, get, not really get rid of, but just be able to pull out that information that they see that's important. And so a lot of times it would help to maybe hide the extra. And so when you put this in a Google Doc, you know, we could highlight 
and use our highlighting tool or the student could and really just black that out. And so what can happen is as we're doing that, that would help sort of eliminate some of the extra and really help kids to have a visual of what really is um, the most important parts of either, you know, an article or um, a story problem. Um, the great thing about doing this in Google Docs versus on a piece of paper is when I make a mistake, it's very easy to correct. Um, so that's just a very simple way to, for maybe some students that, you know, needed just a different look at um, when there's a lot of words on a page and to be able to maybe um, really pick out what is the most important. Okay, um, kind of looking at some of our maybe younger students or even students, um, this is a real simple example, um, or even students, you know, some of our EL students are just students that really need a scaffold when it comes to vocabulary. And we know vocabulary can be a pretty challenging task for some of our kiddos. Um, Google Docs is a pretty easy way to just provide visual for students. Um, and so obviously this would be a more lower level um, type of uh, document, but just being able to, you know, give students the support they need to understand vocabulary. So um, this, uh, is a great tool for them to be able to pull in pictures, images. Um, one of the other things that I really love that, that's an easy way to do this is if you use um, the insert and you go to image, that they can actually use their camera. And so um, what a great um, activity for students to be able to take a selfie. Um, uh, and demonstrate what does beside mean? How could they in their classroom be able to take a picture of, you know, the word beside and really understand with a visual um, what that actually means? So using um, Google Docs to just for vocabulary purposes is a great support for our students. Okay. I think that is um, all I have for you today. I know that was a lot. Um, again, if you have anything that you're needing help with or you want some more ideas, we are happy to help you. Um, you can always email the curriculum team. So it's curriculum at robinson.k12.tx.us. Um, and so thank you so much. And um, I hope you have a great day.